Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for December 13th, 2023. I'm teaching a series on the parables of Jesus. Uh, earlier this year, we went through all of the miracles that Jesus performed, and now I'm going through almost all of the parables that Jesus taught, but we're almost at the end of the year. So this is per Pearls from the Parables, part 115. So 115 messages on the parables of Jesus. Some of the parables that we dealt with dealt with money. And we're going to talk a little bit about money today. Yesterday, we looked at a parable, a parable that we're going back to again today is the rich man and Lazarus that dealt with the consequences of our decisions and the ramifications of eternal life. I talked about heaven. I talked about hell. I'm bringing all of that together today in part 115. The title of today's message is heaven, hell, money, and your heart. I'm dealing with heaven. I'm dealing with hell. I'm dealing with money and I'm going to deal with your heart. My heart, your heart, our heart, right? So get ready to receive. Put in the chat, I submit my heart to God. This is going to be good, y'all. This is good teaching. I want you to get excited about the word. All right, so let's get into it. Put in the chat, heaven, hell, money, and my heart. I'm going to talk about all that stuff. I'm going to talk about heaven. I'm going to talk about hell. I'm going to talk about money. I'm going to talk about your heart. Let's get into it. So this is a parable. Before we get into the parable, Psalms 126 and verse 4 is a scripture we've been looking at all year. I want to look at it again as we seek to close out the year strong. And so here we go. The Bible says, now, Lord, do it again. Say, Lord, do it again. Do it again for me. Do it again, Lord. Restore us to the former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until dry hearts are drenched again. So we put in the chat, no dry areas for me. We don't want any dry areas in our heart. We are completely submitted to God. And if there's any area of our life that dry, dried up, then this is a season for the Lord to refresh you and restore you. So in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31, this is a story that Jesus shared. And I want to share it again with you today. This is what he said. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple. I told you yesterday that it's very hard, if you look at history, to get the color purple. And so those that were dressed in purple had a lot of money. So he was dressed in purple, and he had fine linen, and he lived in luxury every day. This man had a lot of money. Now, at his gate, where he went into his house every day, there was a beggar. And the beggar's name was Lazarus, and he was covered with sores. And Lazarus was always hungry. He was longing to eat. He wanted to, to just get the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Even dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar, Lazarus, died, and the angels came and carried him into Abraham's bosom. I taught you about Abraham's bosom yesterday, and then that was a precursor to now what is known as heaven. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, or in Hades, the rich man lifted up his eyes, and he was in torment. And he looked up and he saw Abraham, who had died thousands of years ago, but he was still alive. You are a spirit. Your spirit is going to live forever in one or two places. He sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus, the beggar, was by his side. But now Lazarus, now that, that he is no longer in this physical body with what, what was going on, he has no sores, none of that, no sickness, no pain. He's fine. So he calls out to Abraham and says, Father Abraham, I want you to have mercy on me. Have pity on me. Tell Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue. I dealt with that yesterday. If you haven't watched yesterday's message, you need to go back and watch that. I talked about your spirit, how your spirit looks like your body, and all of these things. I talked about the finger, the tongue, all of that. He says, I need you to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. He was, he was in agony because he's going to be in eternal torment. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime, I'm going to bring this up today. I think this is very important that even though he's in torment, even though he's in agony, Abraham took the opportunity to bring up what his actions while he was in the, in the world, while he was in the, alive in the earth, in his earth, you know, in his body, in his flesh and blood suit. He said, no, I want to remind you that when you were alive, you received good things. Lazarus received bad things. 
Now he's up here, he's good, and you're down there, and you're in agony. I'm gonna deal with that today. It's interesting to me that he would even bring that up. And besides all of this, between you and us, there's a great chasm. So there's a great chasm. You can't go from hell to heaven or from heaven to hell. Now, once you're in one of the two places, you're gonna be there forever. So no one can cross over from here to there or from there to here. So he answered, okay, okay, fine. So this is what I need you to do, Father Abraham. Send Lazarus to my family. I have five brothers. They're still alive. And I don't want them to die and come here and be where I am. It's, I can't go tell them, but somebody needs to tell them that they need to live different than the way that they're living right now. So please send Lazarus to go tell my five brothers so that they don't come to this place of torment. See, now it's too late. You don't want to do you didn't want to do that when you had all that money. You didn't want to do you want you wanted nothing to do with God because you were caught up in your money. You were caught up in stuff. You see what I'm saying? But now, oh now you want somebody to go tell your family. Abraham replied, No, no. They have Moses, they have the prophets, they have the word of God. Let them listen to the word. The word of God is testifying. If they don't want to listen to the word, no, nope, we're not sending nobody to them. So he said, no, Father Abraham, please, if someone from the dead goes and tells them, then they're going to repent. He said, no, they're not going to listen to nobody from the dead. If they don't listen to Moses, if they don't listen to the prophets, then they're not going to listen to anybody, even if somebody from the dead comes. He's saying the word of God is testifying and they need to just take the word. Listen, the word of God is testifying and either they are going to accept God because of the word and the testimony of the word, then they're not. But whatever they decide, they are going to have to live with the eternal consequences of it. They're going to wind up in either heaven or hell, and it's going to be because either they accepted the word or they rejected the word. Say amen to that. I know people don't talk about heaven and hell today, but I got to preach the word. So what does this mean for you today? I have six things to share with you this morning. Oh my God, this is going to be good. Y'all ready? Six things. Number one, here we go. The inevitability of death and the importance of preparedness. Listen, this is a reminder. This parable reminds us that everybody's going to die. Unless the Lord comes and we get raptured, everybody is going to die. The death is certain, right? I mean, nobody is exonerated from death, regardless of wealth, regardless of status, regardless of prominence or fame or stature, none of that. Everybody is going to die. So listen, we need to recognize that. It emphasizes the, the reality of death and how we need to live our lives in such a way that we're aware of our mortality and we are aware of our eternal destination. I know I'm going to heaven, so I'm good. I, I know, I know for me, dying is not dying. I've done all the dying I'm going to do, right? And so I'm born again. I've done all the dying I'm going to do. For me, when I die, the day I die is graduation day. I, I'm just moving from earth to glory, from time to, to eternity, from mortal to immortality. I'm going to take off this body and I'm going to forever be with the Lord, right? Because I know, I'm, I, I understand my mortality and I'm not afraid of, of dying. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that God sent Jesus to deliver them who all their lifetime, he took the sting out of death so that people who all their lifetime were living under the fear of death. I don't live under the fear of death. People are afraid of flying because they're afraid of dying. People won't go on a cruise because they're afraid of dying. Listen, I'm going to enjoy my life because I know that when that time comes, I'm Audi 5000, G, like we used to say, you know what I'm saying? We just celebrated 50 years of hip hop. Anyway, so I, I'm ready to go. When that time comes, I'm ready to go. I understand that we're going to die. And I understand that when I die, I'm good. I, I already, I have reservations. I know where I'm going. So it encourages us to evaluate our spiritual state with God on a regular basis. It teaches us that we need to prepare for eternity because this world, this life is fleeting. You could be here today and gone today. It stresses the importance of living a life that is pleasing to God, not just in this world so that it can echo in the world to come. It reminds us that material wealth is temporary. Money is temporary. It cannot secure your eternal destination. You are not going to heaven or hell based on your bank account. So listen, you need to check your own heart. It encourages us to seek spiritual riches, things that have eternal value, things that have value now and in the world to come, things like faith and hope and love and service, things that have eternal value. You want an eternal return on your investment. So here's my question as I close out my first point, are you ready to die? I don't mean like, are you ready to die today? But I'm saying, are you prepared for that when that day comes? I'm prepared. I know that I'm, when that day comes, 
I'm out of here. And, uh, uh, but, and when I go, I know where I'm going and I have zero concern about that. So now we need to live our lives in such a way that where we're sowing into our future, say amen to that. Number two, a divine perspective on equality and justice. The fact that Abraham, let me just slow down and just bring this up. The fact that Abraham says to a man who is already in torment, hey, cool my tongue. He said, no, I'm not going to cool your tongue. Now, first of all, let me just remind you that when you were in the world, you want Lazarus, who's up here, to cool your tongue. But let me remind you that when you were in the world, you had everything and you lived in the lap of luxury and you ignored Lazarus on a daily basis. He was the one that was suffering and you ignored him. And now that he is enjoying eternal life and you're suffering, you want him to comfort you and you never comforted him. Why am I bringing this up? Listen, Abraham is bringing this up because it's a reminder that you're going to reap whatever you sow. This to me speaks volumes. This parable illustrates God's judgment. This is why I told you that you don't have to get people back. Justice and recompense belongs to the Lord. You don't have to worry about getting people back. God, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. And this parable reminds us that sometimes they're going to reap it in, eternal, in eternity. And so, so, so th that's why people say, oh, I don't understand how, how these people, like God could just let these people have do all these wicked things and they have all this money. Oh, no, no. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Abraham was saying, no, I'm going to let you reap what you sow. You, you ignored him. Now we're going to ignore you. Oh, my God. I'm talking about this is in the Bible, y'all. You're, you're already in eternal torment. He said, no, I'm going to let you reap a harvest on the bad seeds that you've been sowing. It highlights that divine justice. It's not just based on material possessions. It's it's it's. It's eternal. God's justice is eternal. It encourages us that we need to practice humility. Why? Because the seeds that we're sowing now, we're still going to be reaping a harvest in, in eternity, even in the world to come. So this parable is stressing to us that God's justice is fair. God's justice is perfect. And everybody is going to be rightly judged. And so what do we do? Micah 6 and 8 says, watch this, live justly love mercy, and walk humbly before God. And, and, and people are going to get whatever they're supposed to get. Don't worry about it. Let, the, let God be God and his enemies be scattered. Don't, you don't have to worry about trying to get anybody back. Whatever they sow, that shall they also reap. And they may even reap in the world to come, and they will be in, eternal, in, a, in a state of eternal reaping at that point. So let God be God. You just live your life. Say amen to that. Number two, oh, I'm preaching good. Uh, uh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen in the chat. Number three, how God sees it when you ignore the needs of other people. Let me say this, because I'm talking about money today too. The rich man neglected Lazarus. The rich man was living in luxury and he had to walk past Lazarus every day whenever he went outside. And he did it on purpose. He ignored him. And I want you to know that that is not the heart of God. The rich man's neglect of Lazarus highlights for us the consequences of indifference. Like if you develop a heart of indifference towards the suffering of other people, God is going to check you for that. We need to check our own hearts. To be clear, this man did not pay for his neglect while he was on the earth. He paid for his neglect in eternal torment while he was basking in his riches, it seemed like he was getting away with it. While he was basking in his riches, he was ignoring the lead, the needs of the less fortunate. And it seemed like, uh, I don't know, he, just, he could just do whatever he want. Okay, fine. But then when he got to hell, he regretted his decisions and he was regretting it and he's going to regret it forever. So this provides an answer to us for the people that are saying, why does this thing, listen, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You just let God be God. There, there are eternal consequences to our decisions, but it also re reminds us that if God has given us resources and we have more than enough for us, we, God is the God of more than enough, but why does God give us excess? Why does God give us more than enough? I told you that the purpose of your prosperity is evangelism. God gives you more than enough so that you can minister to people out of your overflow. 
If God gives you more than enough, but you develop a heart of indifference towards those that are suffering, those that are less fortunate, it doesn't bother you at all to see people in need and you have, and you have the ability to do something about it. You have the ability to be a blessing. And you're walking past somebody and they're starving and they're asking you for money. And you're like, oh, I don't know, they're going to buy drugs. And there's like a McDonald's or a deli right there or a, a pizza shop. And you can just buy them a slice of pizza. And, and you have the money and the Holy Spirit says, buy them a slice of pizza. And you're like, Psh, whatever, you know, and you walk past it and you ignore the Holy Spirit because you develop a callus in your heart and you're more focused on your comfort and your money, I'm telling you, there's going to be eternal consequences. I'm saying like, we got to check our own heart. This is for real, y'all. This is, Jesus taught this. this. I didn't make this up. This is Jesus bringing this up. This parable is encouraging us to be attentive to the needs of people, man. God gives us more than enough. Why? To be a blessing, to minister to other, others out of your overflow. And it's not just about money. I get up every morning to do this. This is part of my ministry. Why? Because I'm good. Like, I mean, I understand the word of God that God gives me. I could take it and be like, okay, this is for Rick Pena, for Isabella Pena. We're just going to live it ourselves. No, God gave me a, an overflow of understanding. And why did he give me an overflow of understanding? Because it's not just for me. God gave me the overflow of understanding so that I can then share that with you, right? God puts money in our ministry. We just, we just, uh, one of the people that, that, that are in our business wanted to give away clothes and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, she's, she's doing like a, a charity thing for Christmas and, and, and buying a bunch of stuff and say, Hey, from our ministry, we're going to give. And, um, and why? Because we have it and, and we can, and the Lord is like, do it. <laughs> I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so, so listen, you need to check your heart concerning the resources that God gives you. The, the guy had the money and he ignored Lazarus on a daily basis and he was checked for it. Not in this world, but in the world to come. This is stressing to us the importance of compassion and empathy and mercy. It's teaching us. What does James 1 and 27 says? True religion involves caring for the widows and the orphans. James was saying, listen, don't tell me that you just coming to God with all these songs. You coming to God with, you, you driving a big old car and you got the little fish on the back of your car and you driving past everybody and you have all this money and you're doing nothing with it to advance the kingdom. And all you want to do is go on vacations and eat all these steak dinners and stuff like that. God is going to check your heart. Listen, I'm not saying that God won't give you money. God gives you money with a mission and prosperity with a purpose, but we got to check our heart. We got to make sure that we are using these resources for the advancement of the kingdom. Say amen. Amen to that. Number four, the role of stewardship and generosity in the Christian life. Put this in the chat. I will be a steward and I will be generous. This, this parable is emphasizing to us that we're supposed to be stewards. A steward means I don't own it. Everything belongs to God. Everything that we that Isabella and I have access to, Lord, what do you want to do with it? This is not ours. Our business, Inspire Solutions, is not our business. God owns Inspire Solutions. Lord, what do you want to do with Inspire? Lord, what do you want to do with our ministry, Rick and Isabella Pinion Ministries? Lord, what do you want to do? Like, you got to understand that you are merely a steward. And when you understand that you're a steward, you you you... You want to do whatever God wants to do. And our God is generous. Our God is a generous God. He's going to lead, lead you to use those resources to advance his kingdom so that you don't make your life about material possessions. Now, if you like something, God can give you a hundred of it. Like if you if you like cars, God will give you 10. I mean, I, I, so it's not like, I mean, God has no problem with giving you stuff. God, the issue is not you having things. The issue is things having you. So our acts of generosity, I want to make sure that you understand this. Your acts of generosity will echo within the halls of eternity, not just in this world, but also in the world to come. Number five, the power of God's word to transform people's lives. Let me talk about the word of God. I like the fact that when, when the man says, hey, tell Lazarus to go tell my brothers that they need to get saved. He was like, no, we're not going to send nobody. Why? Because they already have the word. There, he was like, no, no, I'm not going to send nobody to go tell your brothers. Oh, well, what, somebody comes from the afterlife, they're going to believe. No, no, no. If they don't believe the prophets, if, if they don't believe the word, if they don't believe Moses, then they're not going to believe us. He said, no, the word of God testifies. We need to preach the word. And when people get mad at me, if I'm preaching the word, I'm be like, okay, what part of this was me? Like, you can get mad, but if you want to get mad, get mad at the word. The word of God says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can go to the Father by, by him. That's it. Uh, the word of God teaches that a marriage is a, a relationship between one man, one woman, and God. You don't like it? 
Have, you have an issue with God, not me. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go around it. I'm not going to change it. The word of God teaches us certain things and we have to uphold the standard of the word of God. And the word of God testifies of eternal life. Listen, if people go to hell and they, they knew the word of God, then they chose to go to hell. They rejected Jesus. They rejected the word of God. And so what we got to do is just exalt the word of God. There is power in the word of God. Say amen to that. Oh, I know. I know there's not stuff people talk about today, but I'm going to preach it. All right. Number six, last point for today. So I'm going to let you go. The importance of self-reflection and spiritual awareness. Listen, we're at the end of the year. This is a good time for this. This is a good time for us to reflect over 2023 Get ready for 2024. Check our hearts, see where we are. Am I walking with God? Am I being a good steward? Am I being generous? Am I walking justly? Am I living uprightly? Like, am I, am I walking in integrity? Am I honoring the Lord? Like, you know, this is a good time for us to check our heart. I'm gonna, we're going to live forever. Your spirit, you are a spirit, and your spirit will live forever in one or two places. So this parable is urging us to check our hearts, and then once you check your heart and you know, if you're born again, you're going to heaven, then Lord, what do I want to do with the rest of the days? Like if I'm on this planet, if all you wanted for me to do, Rick Pena, was to go to heaven, I would be dead because I know I'm going to heaven. So why am I here? Well, if I'm here, it's because God is not through with me yet. And if God is not through with me yet, okay, what do you want me to do? Oh, Rick, you and Isabella are so busy. You're involved with this. Y'all need to chill. It don't take all that. Like y'all could just be relaxing. You're right. And if God allowed me to just do less, I would do less. But but I, I, I only get one life, man. You only get one life. And I want to do what God called me to do. Now, do we take vacations? We thank, you, thank you, Lord. He gives us good vacations. I, I'm good with that. Lord have mercy. And we're about to be in the Dominican Republic next week. Hallelujah. But, but even there, we're going to be at our school. We got a Christmas party for the kids. I just want to do whatever God called me to do. I don't want anything more than what God wants but I also don't want anything less. This is a time for us to check our hearts. It's at the end of the year. This parable is reminding us that there are eternal consequences to our decisions and actions. I'm talking about heaven. I'm talking about hell. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about your heart. Are you doing with the money that is in your hands you have access to? Are you doing with that what the Lord wants? Are you honoring the Lord? And don't, don't, and let's not get into percentage. Oh, well, Rick, you know, I'm giving 10%. Listen, the Lord will lead you to give way more than 10% if your heart is open to it. So just be open, open under the new Testament. We just got to be led by the Holy spirit. Lord, what do you want me to do with these resources? Lord, what do you want? How do you want me to be a blessing? Uh, Lord, how am I living? The rich man and Lazarus, think about this parable and, and think about what it means to you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I've already given you enough. Uh, I want you to, to declare this over your life. I really want you to check your heart today, though. And this is a message you do need to maybe listen to again, but make sure you share it. All right, so speak this over your life. Say, Father, I acknowledge the inevitability of death and the importance of being spiritually prepared. I commit to living a life that reflects your justice and your equality. And I treat everyone like they're your children. I choose not to ignore the needs of others. I demonstrate compassion and kindness in my words and deeds. I use the resources you have entrusted me with to glorify your name and to be a blessing to others. Oh, I believe in the power of your word. So I am a hearer and a doer of the word. I reflect, contemplate, meditate, and act out your word daily. I check my heart on a daily basis. And living with this mindset, I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. Tomorrow I'm going to have another one. So listen, I hope you heard my heart. Yesterday and today, these two messages are really important. I mean, I'm just preaching the word, right? This is what's in the word. But this is a message that is in season, especially as we seek to close out 23, 
2023 strong head into 2024. If you don't have my books, this is a good time of the year to get my affirmations books. Go to rickpina.co or just go to Amazon and type Rick Pina. But get level up your life. It's going to help you level up in five areas. Get uh, the devotion, grace-based success. Get the affirmations books. This stuff is going to help you, man. I just want you to be who, whoever it is that God has called you to be. I, I'm, I'm just striving to be who God called me. I'm not perfect. Well, none of us are perfect. You know, I just want to be a blessing. I just want to attempt to do what God has called me to do. And I pray that you do the same thing. I love you. God loves you more. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. And then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program, and Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity, and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.